How to make a Linux Ubuntu live CD. Creating a live CD is a must and the benefits and usage cannot be covered in one video. Let's get started. There are other ways to install Linux. We will focus on the live CD in this tutorial. The live CD concept itself is essential for the beginner. Let me explain. When you boot your Windows or Linux operating system, that information is stored on or in the hard disk memory. The booting process transfers your operating system into RAM memory. When your computer is on, your operating system is operating in RAM memory. Your operating system is booted from storage on your hard drive. When you're watching videos and surfing the net while downloading a torrent, this is all happening in your RAM memory not on your hard drive. With a Linux Live CD, you can boot a Linux operating system from your CD drive instead of your hard drive. Let me say that again. Put a Linux Live CD in your computer and you can use Linux without changing your hard drive. The operating system boots from the Live CD in your computer and you can use Linux without changing your hard drive. The operating system boots from the CD that you place in the drive. The CD drive becomes the hard drive, essentially. Linux Live CDs will function slowly, yet offer most of the functionality of a standard install. This is great for testing. A Live CD can be used to recover information from a drive with a broken operating system, even Windows. A Live CD is also a useful tool when you are troubleshooting hardware. The Live CD is a hacker's Swiss Army knife. With a Live CD, anyone can recover information from your hard drive. Linux Live CDs and distros come in many flavors. I recommend that any user, as a beginner, use the beginner and user-friendly version Ubuntu. Ubuntu Desktop is a leader in open source technology. Ubuntu offers a desktop version that is outstanding. To get Ubuntu, go to Google and try to type Ubuntu. Go to Ubuntu.com Keep in mind that over time this website will be updated and may not match this tutorial. On the front page look for the download Ubuntu section. On the Get Ubuntu page you will have choices. The Ubuntu server and Ubuntu Cloud are not relevant to this topic. Click on Ubuntu Desktop for the desktop computer version. From this page you are given a few simple options. The first question is which version do you want? Currently there are two choices. The number represents dates. At the moment, Ubuntu is offering a long-term supported version. Either are fine. I recommend the long-term support LTS. The long-term support LTS version is a suitable version for years to come. Beginners, start here. Next, you must decide whether you want the 32-bit or 64-bit version. It's so important that you understand this concept. Computers are evolving rapidly. The transition from 32-bit processors to 64-bit processors requires the end user, you, to pick the right one. To find out which processor you are using is a few clicks away. Click on the Windows Start button. Then right click on the computer and select properties.
On this page, a number of stats are shown. Your operating type, your RAM, your processing power. Under system type, you will see that this computer has a 64-bit operating system. If this computer was using a 32-bit operating system, it would display that data right here. Ubuntu thrives because it has a loyal and sophisticated community. Donations are accepted, but you do not have to donate to use Ubuntu. Just set all these pegs to zero and click the download button. Always save the file. You don't want to open it. Save the file. Click OK. Now you have the file. What you need to do next is get a blank DVD. Do not acquire cheap DVDs and expect the highest quality end user experience. There is a process involved with placing the downloaded Ubuntu file on the disk. It is important that you understand this next concept now and into the future. The disk image file extension is ISO, ISO for short. You will notice that your Linux download file ends with the extension .iso. This is an ISO file. The challenging part is the method you use while burning the disk to DVD. There is an option with ISO disk image known as burning a disk image. When I write this file to a disk, I will save it as all files or as an image file if the option is available. Or it could say burn as a disk image. The lingo can be quite confusing. Be prepared to waste a few disks and pay attention to what you're doing. You will get it right sooner or later. This is a common hang-up for beginners. Just buy a stack of DVDs and go to town. There are other versions of Linux that it can acquire uh, that you can acquire to use live CDs for as well. Burn disk image. Now Windows 7 automatically detects that this is a disk image but in future and using other softwares you may need to configure this properly all you have to do from here is burn the disk image it's recognizing that it is a disk image it can tell that you want to burn a disk image file start burning the disk image this is okay Again, that was right-clicked on the file, and an option at the top should say Burn Disk Image. And this should be here without any special software uh, standard in Windows. Once you have burned your disk, put it in the disk drive of the computer you want to try it out on. Now you can enter a new process. Supposing you burn the ISO disk image correctly, you can boot Linux from the live CD. The next video will showcase the process of booting a live CD without making any changes to your hard drive. The prerequisites for booting a live CD are as simple as a single setting in BIOS. Good luck with your first Linux live CD boot. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Subscribe to this channel and grow your knowledge about Ubuntu and other aspects of the open source community. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to boot Linux from a live CD.